Welcome back, and we have completed the scenario analysis macro, so let's review the results now. Our first batch of scenarios is where we did not change the deal structure, and we will refer to these scenarios as base case scenarios. You can see that at roughly 75% DRO limit, the tax equity partner is using all the tax credits generated by the project. As we have increased the DRO limit, we reallocated less tax credits to the sponsor. Increasing the DRO limit allows the tax equity partner to absorb more losses and therefore reallocated less tax credits to the sponsor as we saw when we reviewed the model. Note that as tax equity reallocates less tax credits to the sponsor, he is able to invest more in the project. So, increasing the DRO limit results in increased tax credits to the tax equity, which leads to the increased investment and which, in its turn, makes tax equity more tax efficient in terms of the suspended losses. This has a positive effect on the PPA price, and at the DRO limit of 75%, we have some decrease in the PPA price, although it is not a big decrease. And generally, the leverage of the sponsor has increased somewhat, but not a lot. So, the conclusion here is the tax equity has to increase its DRO limit in order to use all the tax credits generated by the project. Next, we have these three scenarios, where we are distributing 95% of the cash flows in the first five operating years to the sponsor. You can see in these scenarios, tax equity is reallocating slightly more tax credits to the sponsor compared to the base case. The PPA price is slightly higher. And tax equity invests less into the project, which increases his tax inefficiency with respect to the suspended losses. We are giving less cash to the tax equity partner. And in order for him to reach his required IRR of 6.5%, he has to cut down on the investment. The investment of the sponsor is somewhat higher compared to the base case because of the lower tax equities investment. And an increase in the back leverage loan does not replace all of the reduction in tax equities investment. So, we can conclude that giving the cash to the sponsor early on in the project's life might not be beneficial for the partners. Next, we have the scenarios where we gave a higher IRR to the tax equity partner, and in return, we reduced the cash sweep to 50% in the P99 case. We can see that the results from these scenarios are almost the same as those in the base case. Tax equity is reallocating almost the same amount of tax credits to the sponsor as in the base case. Tax equity is investing less into the project to reach the increased target IRR of 7.5%. However, decreased cash sweep means a bigger back leverage loan size. Therefore, most of the decrease in tax equity's investment is replaced with back leverage loan financing. Overall, in these scenarios when we are giving higher IRR to the tax equity partner, the results are almost the same as those in the base case scenarios. Then, we have scenarios where we are allocating 50% of the cash to the tax equity in the pre-flip period from year 6 to year 10. And the results are interesting because, in these scenarios, tax credits reallocation goes almost to zero at the DRO limit of 45%. The tax equity invests more because of the increased cash flow in the pre-flip period, and his increased investment allows him to absorb more losses and therefore, he reallocates less tax credits to the sponsor at lower DRO limits compared to the base case. The back leverage loan size is lower in the scenarios, but the sponsor is more than compensated by the increase in the tax equities investment. So, the results of these scenarios are promising. Note that we do not have to increase the DRO limit to 75%. We would be okay somewhere between the 45 and 55% DRO limit. So, What's happening in these scenarios is that we are giving more cash to the tax equity partner, and he is able to reduce his DRO commitment to the project to use all the tax credits. So, the sponsor is giving something to the tax equity partner, but he is not getting compensated. And therefore, we've created other scenarios, where the sponsor asks for the cash sweep reduction to 50% from 99% in return for the increased cash distribution to the tax equity. As in the previous scenarios, Tax credits reallocation goes to zero at the 55% DRO limit. He invests significantly more compared to the base case scenario. And the sponsor invests only $30 million in this scenario, which is lower than what he invests in the base case. In fact, the sponsor invests $10 million less than what he invests in the base case. Therefore, 
the project's leverage is high and is 76%. If we compare the PPA price to that in the base case, it is also somewhat lower by about $3 per megawatt hour. So, we may conclude that this scenario, when we are giving more cash upfront to the tax equity and reduce the cash sweep in the P99 scenario, is a win-win situation for both parties.